Hello and welcome to Nithranya Game Club. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and today we're going to learn how to play Alma Mater. As the name suggests, we will be running the university, we will have professors and students and we will try to gain the most prestige points of all players. So here is how it plays. First, turn the game board to the side which corresponds to the number of players in the game. This is the side for 4 player game and this is the side for a 3 and also 2 player game. Sort these research cards by the letter on their back, shuffle each pile separately and randomly take one card from each pile and place it on the corresponding space on the game board. Those 5 research cards will form this research track. Sort these student tiles by their front side and create the stacks of three identical tiles and only two identical tiles in a two and a three player games and place them in a random order on one of the spaces in the campus with the corresponding faculty symbol. So when you're done, it may look like this. Then take the professor cards and again create the stacks of three identical cards and only two identical cards in a two and a three player game but this time randomly choose two of those stacks and place them face up on the corresponding spaces of the academy. Repeat the process for all the faculties. Take these glory tiles, sort them by their back and then randomly choose one tile from each group. Place them on the corresponding spaces in this hall of fame and reveal the tiles face up. Then for each player in the game take one card of each letter, so in the four player game four cards, and place these so-called bust cards on their corresponding spaces. Then shuffle the deck of Chancellor cards, draw two of these Chancellor cards and place them on the C and B stack in the Hall of Fame, and then draw one more card than the number of players in the game, so five cards in a four player game, and place them face up next to the game board. Place the round marker on the first space of this round track, and the face marker on the first space of this face track. Give each player a player board called University, all seven bookshelves of the same color, and four masters which are placed on this archive space. Place one marker of each color on this turn order track and the order doesn't matter at this time, then one marker of each player on the starting space of this research track and one on the zero space of the scoring track. Create the supply of these dictionaries and textbooks and if you play a 3 or a 2 player game make sure that the pieces of a color which is not in the game are returned back to the box. That means if the green player is not in the game green books will not be in the general supply. Now perform additional setup for players however I would strongly recommend to do this procedure after you know all the rules of the game. Anyway here's the procedure. Shuffle this deck of setup cards and deal each player 4 cards. Now players will perform the standard draft of the starting cards. Look at your own cards and choose one of those cards to keep. So take that card and place it face down in front of you and pass the remaining 3 cards to the neighbor to your left. All players do the same so you will receive 3 cards from your neighbor on the right. Then again look at the cards in your hand, choose one place it face down in front of you and pass the two cards to the neighbor to your left. Then choose one of those two cards and place it face down in front of you and pass the remaining card to the neighbor to your left. Then look at all the four cards you have drafted, secretly choose three of them to keep and one of them to be discarded. Then all players simultaneously reveal all their setup cards face up and sum up these values which are at the top of their cards. Then the player with the lowest total value becomes the starting player for the game. Then the player with the second lowest value becomes the second player and so on and so forth. In case of a tie, the player with the lowest number in this bottom right corner of the card wins the tie. Then arrange the player markers on the starting space of the research track in the same order so the last player is at the bottom and the first player is on the top. Then in the turn order each player chooses one of those Chancellor cards and places that card next to their university. Then the remaining Chancellor is placed on top of this A stack in the Hall of Fame. 
Then again, in turn order, each player arranges these bookshelves in any order they want, with the scholar side up showing the number of prestige points. Place 6 tiles in the bookshelf and keep the 7th tile nearby. Now again, in this turn order, each player takes the starting resources from their setup cards. This yellow book represents a dictionary. The dictionaries have a special role in the game, and when you gain a dictionary, always put it into your storage. These grey books are textbooks, and the books with the star symbol are the textbooks in your own player color. When you gain these textbooks in your player color, you have two options. You can either place them in your storage, or you can put them into the bookshelf. Textbooks in your storage may be spent for various actions in the game, while textbooks in your display are actually up for sale to other players. They can purchase those books for the depicted price, and you may never move the books between your display or bookshelf and your storage. So when you get those books, make sure you choose wisely where you place them. When you gain the textbooks of your player color and you place them into your display, always place them from right to left. These textbooks without the star symbol are textbooks of any color in the game, even your own one. When you take the textbook of another player color, place it into your storage. Your storage has a limit, which is always 6 at the start of the game, and when you gain more students, you can increase that limit. When you have this green gear symbol on your starting setup card, you may move your marker on the research track one space up. You don't have to pay any costs, you don't have to meet any requirements, this is a free action. If you would have three green steps on your starting cards and you would reach this space, you would actually reach this milestone and get the reward. I'll talk about the research track later in the video. These symbols obviously indicate that you may gain some coins. If you have a setup card with this symbol, you can immediately gain that many prestige points. And finally, when you have the student tile depicted on the setup card, you may take the corresponding student tile from the game board and place it in the next available free lecture hall of your university. When you take all the starting resources, you can return all the setup cards back into the box. The game is played over 6 rounds, and each round has 3 phases. First phase is the action phase, then the second phase is the administration phase, and the third phase is the income phase. All the in-game actions are done during this action phase. The game ends at the end of the 6th round, and at the end of this administration phase, so there is no income phase at the end of the round 6. During the action phase, players take turns starting with the first player and then following this turn order. On your turn, you can either use one of your masters or one of your professors. To use your masters, you have to take one or more of your masters, and you may either place them in one of these grey round action spaces, which you can find around the game board, or in one of these two special action spaces. Each of those spaces corresponds to one of the actions in the game. The second option is to use one of your professors who can give a lecture. When you do so, tap that professor card and take the depicted action. If you don't want to or if you cannot perform any of these options, you can pass and with that your round is over. You may no longer take turns during this round and you have to wait until all players pass and then proceed to the administration phase. Before I explain all the action spaces, I need to talk about how to use the masters. If you want to use an empty action space, you have to place one of your masters in that space. If another player would decide to use the same action space, they have to use one additional master, so they would have to use two masters. Potentially the third player to use the same action space would have to use three of their masters, and so on and so forth. You may never use an action space where you already have a master of your color. These yellow pieces are not masters, they are called tutors. However, they act as masters, they count as masters. But after you use them on an action space, they are immediately discarded back to the general supply. That means that if I was the red player, I can use the tutor on the action space, use the action space and discard the tutor, 
and with the next action I can use my master of my color and use the same action space again. If the action space will already use a master of a different color, I can use the tutor as my second master, use the action space and again tutor would be immediately discarded. Now in case the third player would decide to use the same action space, they only need to use two masters instead of three, because both other players only have one of their masters in that action space. And to finish the example, the fourth player would have to use three masters of their color. Some of the students also have this action space printed on them and all players start the game with one pre-printed student with such action space. This is a great place for tutors because you can use that action with the tutor, then discard the tutor and use the same action again with one of your masters. One last note, all tutors must be placed back into the general supply at the end of the round, even those you have not used during the round. Each player starts the game with four masters, and there are three ways how to get additional masters during the game. First, if you reach 15 prestige points, you can get one of those masters. However, getting the in-game points is not that easy. The second option is to fulfill the requirements on the glory tile, which is next to this letter A, which also grants a master. And the third option is to get six students into your university, which also grants a master. In this section of the video, I will explain all the action spaces on the game board. And we will start with this campus area. When you place your master or masters in one of these spaces in the campus area, you can recruit a student from the corresponding row to your university. To perform the action, choose one of those students, let's say this one, and then pay the books from the corresponding column. Remember, you have to pay the books from your storage. You may never use books from your display. This symbology means that you have to pay two books of one color, then one book of a different color, and then another one book of a different color. In the first round of the game, you can choose any colors you want. So let's say I would spend two red books, one black and one blue. Remember, all three categories must be of a different color. Starting with the second round, all players' textbooks will have certain reputation. If I would decide to recruit this student now, I would have to pay two books of the same color, but the books must be from the first or the second level of the reputation, so either the green or red. So let's say I choose red again. Then I need to spend a book of another color, but it must be a reputation 1, 2 or 3, so green, red or blue, However, I already spent red books, so I can only choose green or blue. And finally, the third one must be again of a different color, but there's no restriction. So it could be black or it could be green as well. The books you spent are placed back into the general supply. You can then take the student tile and place that student in the next available lecture hall in your university. If you place the tile in this A row, it increases the limit of your storage. If you would recruit the sixth student, you can get additional master. And to recruit students to these lecture halls, you also have to pay indicated costs. Most of the students have permanent ongoing effects. These effects with the flash symbol are immediate effects, which you can take immediately after you hire the student. And these effects are endgame bonuses. You can find the explanation of all those effects in the rulebook. One last note, you may never hire the same student twice. To recruit students from this third and fourth column, you also need to use the dictionary. You may never use dictionary instead of any other textbook, and you may never use textbooks instead of dictionaries. When you place your master or masters in one of the spaces in the academy, you can recruit a professor. If you are the first player to recruit the specific professor, let's say this one, First, you have to pay the costs in coins. So in this example, six coins. Then you have to spend three books of one color, two books of a different color, and one book of a third different color. In this case, there are no restrictions. So let's say I will spend three red books, two blue and one black. Then take the professor card, place it next to your university and you can immediately activate that professor, so you can take the effect on the card. In this case, 
I can place one tutor to my archive space. Again, you can find the explanation of all those actions in the rulebook. Now take one of the books from the color where you have the most books and place it on that professor card. Anytime you want to activate that card again in the future, you will have to spend one book of that particular color. So usually the best choice is to use the books of your own color. Return the coins to the general supply, as well as all but one book from each space. From now on, if any player would buy the same professor card, they have to pay exactly three books of this color, two books of this color and one book of this particular color. They don't have to pay the coins, only the books. Again, you may not hire the same professor twice. Since there are no specific book symbols in these spaces, in a four player game you may, and in a three player game you will have to, use the dictionaries as well. When you take this antiquarian action, choose one of these three options and perform it one time. So for three coins, you can take a textbook of any color, even your own one, or for six coins, you can take a textbook of any color and one dictionary, and for nine coins, you can take one textbook of any color and two dictionaries. When you take this spark action, again, you can activate it only one time and for 10 coins, you can gain seven prestige points immediately. Now, when you activate this laboratory, you can either activate three black research steps or one green step. For each black research step, you may advance your research marker one step on the research track. To do that, you either have to meet the requirements on the left side or pay the costs on the right side. So in this case, you either have to have three students in your university or you have to pay two coins and three prestige points. Your prestige points can never go below zero, so if you don't have enough prestige points, you may not pay that cost. So if you meet the requirement or pay the cost, you may advance your marker one step. With three black research steps, you may repeat the process three times. You don't have to, you may. Again, if the symbology wouldn't be clear, you can find the explanation of all those symbols in the rulebook. Now, when you activate the green research step, it's a free research step. So you may move your marker with no requirements and no additional costs. When you move your marker to the next step of the research track and that step already contains another marker, place your marker on top. When you reach the step, which is right below this white space, this milestone space, you actually reach that milestone immediately. So move your marker one step up. This is not considered an action. This is an automatic step. And then you immediately take the reward shown next to that milestone. Some of those milestones like this one allow you to take an action with reduced cost. So to use the full benefit of those milestones, make sure you understand the effects of those milestones before you reach them. You can only use the effect of those milestones immediately. You may not use that later. When you reach the last milestone, if you are the first player to reach that milestone, place your marker to this space. If any other player would reach that last milestone, that marker would be placed on the second space. Third marker would be placed on the third space. These action spaces, the bishop action space and the colloquium, are special action spaces and the rules for placing the masters don't apply here. When players place masters to the bishop action space, they will take the coins from the general supply based on the number of masters they placed on that particular turn. In this case, black player would take five coins. On their turn, players may place any number of masters to this space and take the corresponding number of coins. You can even place the masters to this action space multiple times in the same round. In addition to taking coins from this action space, the player with the most masters in this action space will go first in the next round. In case of a tie, like here we have three black masters and three green masters, the player who plays their masters first will go first. This action space is called Colloquium. You may also use it multiple times per round, but you always place one master in that action space. And then you can either buy dictionaries or you can buy textbooks from other player. When you buy dictionaries, you may buy any number of them and each one costs four coins. When you buy textbooks from other player, 
Again, you may buy any number of textbooks, however, you may only buy those textbooks from one player. So let's say we have a green player acting and they want to buy red textbooks. They can only buy the textbooks which are placed in the bookshelf and they buy it from left to right. The price for each textbook is depicted above that textbook. If you want to buy more textbooks that are available in the bookshelf of that player, you can buy more from the general supply and each would cost 4 coins. So to buy the books from another player, choose how many books you want to buy. And let's say the green player wants to buy these two textbooks. Pay the indicated costs, in this case 6 coins. Place the purchased textbooks into your storage and then choose one of those tiles from which you bought the books and score the prestige points from one of those tiles. Note that it would be the green player who would score those prestige points, so it's always the player who is purchasing the books. After scoring those prestige points, flip that tile face down. You may still use that tile. When you take the textbooks of your color, you can still place those books in this tile. However, when other players buy the books from the red player, they would not score any prestige points from this tile. These three glory tiles are optional objectives you can fulfill. In order to meet those requirements, you simply have to have them in your storage or in your university. You don't have to spend them. If you do, take one of those bust cards from the corresponding stack and place it next to your university. The card indicates that you have fulfilled the objectives of the A glory tile and in addition to your own chancellor, you can also use the ability of the corresponding chancellor from the game board. In addition, take this bonus immediately. Using those chancellor's abilities is not an action and you can do it anytime on your turn. You may not take more than one bust card from the same stack, which means you may not fulfill the same objective more than once. However, you may fulfill multiple objectives and use the ability of all chancellors. When all players have passed in the action phase, proceed to the administration phase. First, determine the new turn order. The player with the most masters in this bishop space will become a new player for the next round. In case of a tie, the player who plays their master or masters first wins that tie. The relative position of those players who placed no masters in the bishop space remains unchanged. So in this case, black player becomes the first player and the relative position of blue and green player doesn't change. Then in the second step, check the storage size of all players. The limit of the storage size is determined by the number of students in this A lecture halls. In this case, the size limit of this player is 8 books. That includes textbooks and dictionaries as well. If you would have more books than your size limit, you would have to return any excess books back to the general supply. Then, in the third step, you have to determine the reputation of players' textbooks. At the start of the game, books have no reputation yet. At the end of each round, the reputation of textbooks will be determined by the position of players' markers on the research track. The player with the marker highest on this research track will have the highest book reputation and the player with the lowest position marker will have the lowest reputation. In case of a tie, the player with the marker on top will have higher reputation. So in this example, blue player will have the highest reputation, then the red player, then green and black. Take one textbook of each color from the general supply and place them in this reputation track based on the new reputation order. Then in the next step, as this symbol indicates, ready all your professors in your universities. Then in the next step, players take back all their masters and place them in the archive space. If you would have any tutors you have not spent during the turn, those tutors are returned back to the general supply. And finally, move the turn marker to the next round. Then proceed to income phase. However, if this will be the end of round 6 and you move the round marker to this space, the game would end immediately and income phase would not be performed. During the income phase, players will get income and they would get one coin for each book in their bookshelf. Then they would slide all the bookshelves one space to the left, insert the new tile to the right, 
and place the leftmost tile to the right side of your university. If this tile would contain any textbook, that would be returned back to the general supply. When sliding your tiles, never flip them to the opposite side, always keep the same side up. Then if you have any students with this hand symbol, gain the indicated income. In this case, it's another coin. This tile also increases the limit of your storage size. And players also gain income based on their position on the book reputation track. In this example, black player would take three coins, green player two coins, and so on and so forth. When you reach the end of round six and you move the round marker, proceed to final scoring. The final scoring procedure is also shown at the bottom of your university. So first, you can exchange textbooks of any color each for one coin. That means for these three textbooks, red player receives three coins. Then for every four coins, receive one prestige point. In this case, it will be only one prestige point. So move the corresponding marker on the scoring track. Then score the victory points based on the reputation of your textbooks. In a four player game, the player with the highest reputation would gain 12 victory points, then seven victory points and three victory points. In a three player game or a two player game, the player with the highest reputation would gain 12 points, second player would only gain five points and third player would gain nothing. Then in the next step, multiply the number of milestones you have reached by the number of professors you have and that's the number of prestige points you gain. So in this example, a red player has reached one, two, three milestones and has two professors. So that's three times two, six prestige points. Then in the next step, score the prestige points on the professor cards. So four and six in this case. And note that you score these prestige points at the end of the game, not when you recruit those professors. Then in the next step, score the victory points from this mathematics students. They have these end of the game scoring conditions, so you would score these prestige points now. Then, as this symbology indicates, multiply the number of students in your A lecture halls by the number of students in your B lecture halls. In this case, four times three, that's 12 prestige points. And finally, score the number of bust cards you have. In this example, for two bust cards, the player would score seven prestige points. Then the player with the most points is the winner. When you play a three or two player game, there are some notable differences. First, you use the other side of the game board. Then there are only two spaces in the academy. And when you place the master on that space, you can choose one of the four professors. Similarly, when you place a master on this action space, you can either take this action or this action. You may not choose both. Then in a two player game, you have to use the third player called Ignotus. Give him the university board, three masters, arrange their bookshelf tiles in this exact order, so tiles with the one prestige point on the left and tiles with the two prestige points on the right and the tile with the three prestige points next to the university board and shuffle and place this deck of Ignotus cards next to the university. The gameplay is basically the same, however, at the start of each round, before the first player takes their turn, Reveal the top card from this Ignatus deck and perform the actions depicted on the card. You would advance the marker on the research track by the number of spaces depicted on the card. So in this case, blue player would move three spaces, which means the player would immediately reach the milestone. However, Ignatus doesn't gain any rewards from these bonuses. Then add this number of books to the bookshelf of the Ignatus player. And when players buy these books, they pay the money to the general supply, not to the Ignatus player. And finally, place one of the Ignatus masters on these action spaces on the game board. So in our example, it's these action spaces and Ignatus doesn't perform these actions. He simply places the masters there. At the end of the round, Ignatus doesn't receive any resources or bonuses or income. However, he slides the bookshelf tiles. So this is the only procedure which is the same as for human players. 
So that's how you play Alma Mater. If you would have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you're not sure about some symbology, you can find the explanation at the end of the rulebook. If you like the series, please subscribe. My name is Branislav Berec. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.